And tell us about the event tonight. This is a memorial fundraiser uh, to recall the uh, losses of life over the last year, or maybe more like the last 25 or 30 years, in Western Bar El Ghazal, which is a, one of the 10 states of South Sudan. And most people don't know what's going on there, which is part of this story tonight. Tell us a little bit about the history of that area. Well, that's a particularly interesting part of South Sudan because it's where the slave trade started. And it's a very heavily populated with many different tribes, which is part of the problem. Um, there are many small tribes that have lived there peaceably for a long time, but there's also one very large tribe that wants to dominate. And this has been going on for a long, long time. And what are the, some of the, the, the things that are, have been going on there? Uh, well, it, it's, a, it's a battle of revenge. It's turned into a feud um, where perhaps the dominant tribe will come in and take over an area, burn a village, and then those people's relatives will decide maybe a year or two later that it's time to get even when they see uh, a weakness in the dominant tribe. And then, of course, like all feuds, it goes back and forth without end. And uh, violence, refugees, what's going on there? Talk, well, talk about that a bit. Primarily uh, the killing of the men. Uh, the women and children and the elderly seem to be pretty safe, but unfortunately that means that you're living in a country where the median age is 19, and, and, and there are a lot of orphans and a lot of widows. And is the government involved in this one way or the other? Uh, the government, unfortunately, is first of all connected to the dominant tribe. Uh, so they, they try to poo-poo and say that this isn't really a problem. They try to underplay it. And if a uh, military force comes in, it always consists of members of the dominant tribe who are not the residents of the area. And uh, tonight's event is a fundraiser as well. Uh, what's the purpose of the fund? Well, there is an uh, American um, side, Western Bar Community Organization that's focused in Phoenix, Arizona. and. Uh, Two years ago, they raised enough money to build a clinic in WAU, W-A-U, which is the capital of this state. And uh, during the last um, violence, the clinic was destroyed. So we are here to remember the dead and to try to learn to forgive each other and to rebuild that clinic. And if people want to donate to this uh, cause, where can they get more information or where can they go? You could go to Facebook to Western Bar El Ghazal Community Organization of USA. Uh, it's on the sign directly behind me. Or you could um, contribute locally to a project, Bazia. Uh, and we would make sure your donation got to the right place. Sarah, one of the themes for tonight is forgiveness. Talk about that a little bit for us. Yeah, our people have gone through a lot of suffering uh, because of the war. Innocent people have been killed. And uh, for so many reasons, of course, this has created a lot of animosities uh, between uh, different groups or uh, between different tribes. Uh, but uh, we cannot build our community, we cannot build our nation if we uh, hate one another. Uh, so uh, what we are asking our people is to forgive, even if somebody will hurt you, we, uh, would we want to forgive that uh, person or that, that group, uh, uh, because without forgiveness, we will not be able to live uh, happily as neighbors, as people from the same country. Uh, we have um, uh, seen how um, innocent children have, uh, have been uh, murdered, innocent people have been murdered in front of our own uh, communities. Uh, this has uh, actually uh, become a, a problem. Uh, we, we, we are not able to, to build our nation. We want a chance uh, that these victims to speak. In order to forgive, we need to be listening to one another. We need to tell our story. We need to tell what hurts us. And even sometimes talk to the person who hurt you. If you cannot talk to them, you can write them a letter. But we want to acknowledge our mistakes. Without acknowledging what we have done, we will not be able to move forward. And uh, one of the important uh, messages of forgiveness that I would like to encourage people to look at is a book of forgiving uh, by uh, 
Reverend uh, Desmond Tutu and uh, his daughter. Uh, this book is really uh, very important in, in the lives of many people, especially South Sudanese, uh, who have taken the time to read and it has taught us ways of how we can be forgiving and how we can forgive one another because without forgiveness we'll not be able to move forward. Uh, it's, we may not forget uh, for a long time but the most important is to keep have it in our heart that we forgive any person who has hurt us. And what are some of the lessons that Reverend Tutu has in the book that, that, you, that you find are instructive? Yeah, one of the uh, most important, uh, what I learned is about uh, listening and telling our stories. Uh, this, uh, because in many cases we don't, we don't tell our stories, we keep it to ourselves and it uh, traumatizes us. But uh, the most important thing that we can do is to go uh, and find a way just to t talk about our, our stories and uh, to somebody very close to you, to your friend, to a neighbor, to, to your enemy and uh, be heard uh, and acknowledge uh, how hurtful that event or the, 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 uh, uh, the situation that you have gone through hurt you. Uh, and, and forgiveness is, uh, of course comes from both sides, uh, it's not only one way. Uh, 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 one-way one action, but it has to be coming from uh, both sides. And, and, and that to me, uh, that's the beginning of healing, because for us to heal we have to tell what is hurting us, uh, because we cannot heal if we cannot say it, even if you have to go to a doctor, if you don't, uh, if you, your problem is not diagnosed, you have to tell the doctor what your problem is to be able to, to heal it. And, and healing our feelings is the same. If anything hurts us, we need to speak about it so that we can get to a point. And the beginning of any healing is uh, talking about your, your, uh, your problems and learning to forgive uh, the other person or the other uh, situation that uh, that brought the hurt or the, the hate in you. Pastor Daldum, perhaps the most important theme of tonight is rebuilding and looking to the future. Talk about that a little bit, please. Rebuilding and looking to the future is something that talk about hope that we must have in order to have a reason to live. So future is all about planning for our happiness. And how do you go about doing that in, in this sort of situation where so much, so much, there's been so much suffering? Indeed, there has been so much suffering in the Republic of South Sudan as a newly born nation. But despite all this challenging and setback, we as human, we must set our core, our, our, our self into motion and gear to the future because we do not have anything else. We have fought the war, we have lost life, and now we live in a total disintegration. We must reharmonize our relationship with our fellow men we must reconcile and we must look forward to the future. And this will be based on love and forgiveness. And is this a political solution, an economic solution, a social solution? Uh, let's talk about some specifics that you see must be done. The war came as a result of unfairness. It encompasses all kinds of solutions, politically, economically, as well. When you look at the country where uh, there are fortunate people and less fortunate people, that is a recipe for a disaster. But as a leader, a true leader, someone that who believes in bringing the best out of his people is the way out. Because we cannot be in the front leading people from behind. We must be in the line and move forward horizontally together. This is what future is all about. No one is left behind and everyone have an equal stake in the whole thing. And how do you go about 
building a bridge to the people on the other side. It must be difficult to find that way. In order for us to build a bridge, we must have an understanding that out of the bad situation, we must develop a solution. And this solution must be based on reconciliation, on forgiveness, and love. And love is the driving force. When I love you, that means I turn a, a, a blind eye to all your past fault, and I purpose in my heart that this is no longer a reason to cause me to hold grudges. We look at the future of our country, the future of our children, as something that is at stake, and we cannot afford to forfeit that.